Hi, I'm Amanda Lahn from Proud Designs, a florist in Ainsbury, and I'm here today with the Melton City Council um, with the Learning Directory, and I'm going to show you how to do a mason jar. So just simple things that you can make at home while we've been in isolation. Hopefully we're not in isolation too much longer. Um, so I've got a lot of foliage from the garden, um, different flowers that I know that you can access easily from home. So whether it's coals or you go to your local florist or you have some beautiful roses in the garden. Um, but let's get started. So just pretty much a basic uh, mason jar, which I didn't have the particular mason jars, but this is a pasta jar. So it's nice and easy. Um, fill it with water and then we start off with your different foliages. So just go through the garden and you'll find lots of foliages. Um, a lot of people don't realise they've got lots of beautiful foliage in their garden that they can use to make simple arrangements. So I've actually got, these are all from Ainsbury and through people's gardens that I've picked and my own. Um, so little bits of gum, um, another type of gum. And so yeah, so what we do is we grab our big pieces, obviously our stems. Um, the best way is that you always strip your foliage at the base because we don't want the foliage in the water because it does make it more murky and doesn't last as long. So, um, so these are ones I've just prepared earlier. So I've just stripped the base. Normally just with your hand, you can pull them down. And I always say go with three different varieties. If you don't have three varieties, you can just use one type of foliage. So here we go. So um, I've sort of cut them to length already, but the best way to work out how tall you want it is just to put the foliage next to the, the jar and just cut it to the height that you require. So that's the best way. So we're gonna do a bit of a mix. I like to put the stems as low as I can to the bottom um, because sometimes if you're going to gift this jar, which um, these make really good gifts, um, some people forget to water them. So you know if the, the stems are right at the bottom that they'll get a nice long lasting arrangement. So it's pretty much just layering the different foliage through the jar. Again, making sure that there's no foliage on the bottom. Um, you can make them as, as high as you want, um, as short as you want, everyone. Um, we'll do things differently, but just trying to mix it all up so you get a little bit of variety. Um, even little things, little nuts on them look really good, little balls. Um, some people I found, especially in Ainsbury, have these beautiful gum nuts, so they look really good just falling down. Peppercorn, um, which is huge throughout um, Melton City Council, you see it everywhere. So that looks beautiful with the little pink berries on it. Um, so it's pretty simple, just layering the different amounts as, as small as you can again making sure there's no foliage and just popping it through. So that's our base start. So pretty much base it with foliage first. Um, I like to put lots in mine. Um, and then we go across to the flowers once we've done our foliage. Um, and I'm just using a different variety of flowers. So we've got Noreen, we've got some leucodendrons, um, some disbuds, crizzy carnations, some roses, some lizzie. So just depending what you can get your hand on. I actually really like just mason jars with just foliage. I love to have that on my dining table. I'll do about three of those and that's quite pretty as well. Um, all right, so I normally start with a bigger flower first to do the, the position of the, the flower. So if we whack that one in there. So again, push it down to the bottom. If you find it sticking up too high, you just give it a bit of a pull out and we just Cut it a bit lower, again stripping our foliage off, and that will be our centre type flower. Um, and then we've got these little guys, so again maybe about there. I try to sort of position them out on an angle so you get the nice width out of the jar as well. That's a bit hard for me, I'm working sort of the other way, so I'm sort of trying to picture how this is looking at, at your way. Um, I like to use a combination of three flowers as well. So um, instead of using one or four, so it's normally with floristry we use odd numbers. So three is always a good one to use. And we've got this beautiful wattle that's in season now, which is everywhere. And you've got that beautiful pop of yellow as well. So again, I'm going for a bit of a height and then building down. Uh, then we've got some iris, do about there. So some flowers open up a little bit quicker than others. So depending um, if you want a long lasting arrangement, any of your natives are really good for that. So I tend to, especially with heaters and it's quite cold outside, so our houses are a bit warm. Um, definitely natives are really good to use at the moment for winter gifts and flowers. So again, just putting them all in, just gonna have a little look. Yeah, it's not too bad, working backwards. Um, what else have we got? And then you've got little off cuts that you can poke in just to add your little pokes of colour through there. Um, I think the more colour the better. I like a bit of variety. I don't like to tend to go with one flower. So 
So I'm quite often um, raiding my neighbour's gardens in Ainsbury. Um, I'm well known for that, going around with my secateurs and cutters. Um, yeah. My garden's a little bit boring. I have a lot of magnolia, um, marais and things like that. So, but a lot, in, especially in Ainsbury, a lot of people have native gardens. So we've tried to work in with our surroundings and it looks really good. So I'm always pinching people's leucodendrons, especially they're everywhere. And I think this one might do it. Just have a little bit of a, a look. It's a little bit of a messy look, but that's what we're trying to achieve. Um, that iris didn't want to go in, so I'll poke that back in. So it's pretty simple. You can do them quite quickly. Don't spend too much time because the more you fluff with it, the more you're going to break the stems. And um, So the whole idea is just to shove it in there and get that sort of bit of a messy look. Um, and then another thing I've started using, which I did you know, 10 years ago, but I've started bringing there, little peacock feathers, which you can order online. Um, you get bits and pieces from here and there, and they have dyed ones now. So you can get pink and white and all sorts of colours. And these just look really cute in arrangements that you can just poke in and give a little bit of a finish off to the side. So um, I love to just add different things I find around the house, even twigs and sticks that you can use. And at the moment, everything's falling. So you've got lots of blossom trees and just the bare basic twigs look great up the top as well. But this is sort of your basic little mason jar arrangement, which is a great little gift for any occasion. All right, guys, so we've made our a mason jar. So now I thought I'd touch a little bit on how we can decorate our jar. So I tend to decorate them, obviously, before I put the flowers in. A lot of people have a lot of fun. I have a lot of brides that will have mason jars on their tables and they, they've got a, um, the glue gun and they stick beautiful bits of lace and pearls and things like that on. Some of them even spray paint them with a proper glass paint so you can do them in different colours or frost the glass. Um, I just love the old Hessian. It's one of my favourite things, especially if you've got Hessian as a table runner. There's a lot of my brides or functions that I do. Um, so one we can do with some Hessian um, and then a bit of twine or a bit of ribbon around the base. So if we've got a bit of ribbon there. So I pretty much just pop it around there. Sometimes I like to put an elastic band around just to hold it under the ribbon, but I'm going to try and magically do it without the elastic band. So it's pretty much just gathering it like this. And then, and, and I'm doing it backwards, so we're trying to do it so it works that you can see what I'm actually doing. Um, and then just tying a ribbon around here. And then a little bow. And you can do like little gift cards as well, are quite cute that you can attach, get the kids to make little gift cards. My kids are good at doing that job. So just little ribbons. Again, you can stick like a little feather. Um, I've got down the bottom, I've got beautiful rosemary in the garden, so I tend to use a lot of rosemary and things when I decorate my jars. So that one's really good with the hessian, but you can use fabric. So if you've got offcuts of fabric in your sewing box, um, that also looks quite nice to use. Um, and then these guys, these little pom-poms, I think they were $2 from Kmart. Again, um, you can glue these on, but I like to just add them on and then, depending on the age of who you're giving them to, and you can just twirl and just add a little pop of colour by just doing these little guys. So they're quite cute. So your jars, obviously, you can get those yourself from home. You don't need to buy those. If you do, I know a lot of the, the cheaper shops um, sell them. Um, the little accessories are quite cheap. Um, you can get those. Kmart have lots of things. Um, and then, yeah, just foliage and bits and pieces out of the garden. So, But I hope you enjoy making your mason jars and they're great little gifts um, that people just love and you can give them a little box of chocolates or some balloons. So, All right, thank you. So I hope you enjoyed that and um, I'd love to see if you make any at home to um, tag me and post me on my Proud Designs Insta or Facebook page um, or feel free to inbox me if you need some help or further information on how to make these little mason jars because they're quite cute. Thank you.